Hello everybody. Good afternoon or is it good morning? Anyway, it's Friday the 18th of February and Friday's with Father. Um, on a very sunny day outside but a rather cold day to say the least. It seems we survived the snows of yesterday um, but uh, we were still with the cold although I do feel you know that the beginnings of spring are lurking there somewhere. In the meantime, it's still winter and it's Fridays with Father and if you go outside here, you need a coat, a scarf, gloves and a hat and probably boots. Even Jonah uh, needs his boots on to go out because the place is full of salt. And I made the mistake a couple of mornings recently thinking, well, it's not so bad out there and there's not so much salt. And so we go out and we get so far and then after, you know, after a little while, he stops and his hand just goes up like this. You know, the, the salt has gotten into his pads and it's stinging him and I, I feel really bad. So I end up having to like carry him back, you know, or carry him to a safe place. Although recently too, I've also taken a towel with me just to wipe his pads. But he, he wears those little boots which look like balloons. You know, you stick them on and, and, uh, and he's okay with them. But it's just, if I don't put them on, it's because I'm too lazy. Well, it's just, a, you know, at sort of like six o'clock in the morning or whatever. You know, I don't really want to put balloons on his feet, but I, if I have to, I will. But it's very often it's my fault if he doesn't wear the balloons and he, he hurts because of the salt. But there you are. These are minor details in, in the life of a dog owner. <coughs> um, but nevertheless, the winter has its thing. You know, it has its thing. But fortunately, we're coming out at the, the end of it all. What was I going to say to you today? I have a few different things to say to you. One of them is, um, as most of you know, um, the Archdiocese here, the Archdiocese here in Chicago has now given permission for us to be mask optional um, for our celebration of uh, mass or any liturgies of that nature, and um, and so uh, I w I'm really happy about that because you know because it, I was just so tired of like. I was tired of one thing, tired of like putting a mask on and taking it off and putting it on during the celebration of mass for different things. Uh, and then I was also tired, you know, really, I was just tired of just looking out and just seeing all of you with your faces covered like this and only seeing your eyes. I was thinking, oh, when are we going to, when can I see these people again, you know, and um uh, and I understand the whole, you know, it's, you know, for our own protection, everybody else's protection. And, and we've taken all those precautions and we've done it dutifully throughout the whole pandemic. But, you know, you get fatigued, you get tired of doing it and you think, oh, when can I see the faces of people again, you know? And so anyway, um, we now have mask optional um, celebrations here, but most most people still wear masks, which is fine. It's a... It's people's choice because they're just not ready to to tear off the mask just yet for the celebration of mass. However, however, there's a downside and there's a good side, you know, and I'm just sharing this with you, not because I'm complaining or anything, but just, you know, really from, from my own sense of being chastened, you know, really. I, I was so desperate, you know, to sort of uh, to get back to sort of like mask free celebrations. And then I was selling a, celebrating a mass the other day. You know, and there were some people there celebrate, you know, without masks. And as I looked up, you know, to the congregation, I, I caught the full on face of one person who didn't have a mask. And they were just there, right, during the celebration of mass, chewing gum, you know, it's like. And I was thought, I was thinking to myself, see, there you are. You wanted to be mask free. And now instead of that, You've got you've got somebody chewing gum during the celebration. So, you know, there you are. It taught me a lesson to be careful what you wish for, right? You know, <laughs> in some cases, maybe, you know, masks are a good thing, you know. And, uh, and yeah, the vision, the sight of somebody chewing gum, you know, really is not always very uh, edifying uh, when we're celebrating mass. Uh, and if there had been a mask on that person's face, then I wouldn't have seen it. So there you are. It just goes to show, be careful what you wish for, right? So I learned my lesson that day. So anyway, uh, that was one little thing I wanted to share with you. And I say I'm not complaining. I'm just thinking of like, 
you know, God has a good sense of humor, um, a better sense of humor than me. And, uh, and, and I, half the things I do or half the things I think or the situations I get myself in, I think that, you know, Jesus is up there now just like cracking himself up, laughing at me, thinking, ha ha, ha ha, I told you, ha ha, ha ha, you know, so that's my life, right? That's, that's the life of faith that we have and we love and we live. But it also, it's good to be sort of um, caught out like that, really, because again, it's another reminder that, you know, um, my life, if anything, is is, is in Jesus' hands. It's about Jesus and it, it's not about me. Um, we try to make it about me. You know, I try to make it about me, you know, but it's not about me at all. It's it's really about uh, what God wants and, and that's what matters at the end of the day, that, that everything goes in the way that, that Jesus wants it because when that happens, that's when wonderful things happen beautiful things happen that's when exciting things happen and i really want to see that more in my own life and in your life and the life of our parish and the life of the church uh, but that only really happens when we, when we when we forget that we forget that life is 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 about me and we start realizing that life is all about him it's all about jesus and I think that kind of like segues nicely into the, the kind of point I was going to make to you today, really. Um, that very point that our life, if it's about anything, it's about Jesus. Um, and, you know, in Spanish and amongst our Latin American brothers and sisters, you know, they, they use a great little phrase, which they, they, they're very, you know, they'll just, you know, bring it out, you know, from time to time. And they, you know, I don't think they realize it, but it's actually from, it's a, it's a phrase from scripture. Um, but it sounds so much better in some ways in Spanish than English. Uh, and it says, you know, el hombre propone y Dios dispone. El hombre propone y Dios dispone. In other words, like, uh, man kind of proposes and God disposes. Um, and that's not quite, it's not quite easy to grasp the meaning in English. But actually that, that quote comes from the book of Proverbs uh, and it's chapter 16, verse 1. Uh, but people use that in regular uh, speech in, in Latin America. Uh, but the actual quote from, is longer in English and it, it kind of illuminates or enlightens a bit sort of the, 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 the idea, the meaning. And, and the, it, what it says is, you know, the preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. <laughs> the preparations of the heart you know, belong to us, you know, but the answer of the tongue the one who has the final say, it's the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and, you know, in sort of common philosophy in, in Latin American culture, Hispanic culture, there is that sense that, you know, that, um, you know, it's our job in life that w we propose things to God. You know, we prepare things in our heart, but, but it's God that has the final say. If God wants things to happen, they happen. You know, and if, you know, and not, not when we say or what we want it doesn't it doesn't work that way it works the other way around you know so um i i bring you that little kind of uh uh refrain uh from you know hispanic culture today el hombre uh, propone y dios dispone uh, because i think it's very appropriate for each one of us you know that we realize you know um according to that quote from proverbs you know that um you know, the preparation of the heart, that's our job as human beings. But, you know, the, the, the answer of the tongue, you know, it, that's, that's, that's God's bit, you know. God is the one who, who takes the decisions, you know, that, um, that our lives are about doing God's will and, and not my will, you know. And I think that's important for our prayer life. You know, if we prayed that every day, you know, not my will be done but yours, then I think that we might be happier. When you think about it, that was one of, uh, you know, one of Jesus's important prayers um, the night before he died in the Garden of Gethsemane, really, when really um, 
he didn't he didn't want to go through with it that was the human side of him uh, he didn't he didn't want to have to to suffer he didn't want to have to be humiliated and laughed at and stripped and you know he didn't want to be spat at and jeered at by the people who he thought were his friends you know it was a very human experience it's the last thing he wanted but what overrode that um was his desire to do god's will so you know as he said in that prayer you know if this you know if it's possible for this this cup this chalice to pass me by then then please 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 let it pass me by you know but but you know at the end of the day let your will be done and not mine and uh, and that's such an important lesson for us um in our prayer lives and how we pray you know and the whole thing about we propose things and then we see if god will dispose of what will make it happen we prepare the things in our hearts in prayerfully but then you know we we have to always recognize that it's god you know that has the ultimate say in all of these things our life is in god's hands um it's not for me to decide and there's part of us that doesn't like that <clears throat> a lot of people you know who who are not uh, involved religiously or, or don't have a faith life that they, they don't like that because they think well it's my life and i can do with it whatever i want and of course they're right <laughs> it is it is your life you can do with it whatever you want but but jesus has shown us time and time again and shows us time and time again that the best thing ever and the best way we can live our life is with him um because he wants what's best for us and he can you know turn bad things into good things and and show us a side of life and love and nature and all those things which we would never see or discover on our own um but but because you know Jesus loves us so much he's quite prepared for us to walk away or you know he's quite prepared to let us walk away and and for us to decide that we don't want him you know he doesn't want that you know but um but he loves us so much that he 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 freely allows us to do what we want but um it's an important thing in our prayer life and how we live our life um because when we when we decide to go our own way and we make all those decisions for, about everything ourselves with no input from god or without consulting jesus or allowing god to guide us um we are taking upon ourselves uh, a burden you know which is very often uh, a burden we cannot carry um you know um things become complicated and we quickly realize that you know sooner or later that we are out of our depth when we think that we can go everything alone do everything the way we want it and be successful and however successful you are sooner or later um you you have to face it you know you have to face that reality that um you can't do these things on your own and that's like the crisis point i think in faith where you where you realize that you know um god is real and jesus is very real and he's inviting you to be different and to have a different life and he's inviting you to be in a relationship with him and that's where prayer really does kick off um one of the reasons why i'm saying all this today was that i had somebody come to confession to me um just this you know last week or so uh and and he said to me you know father you know he said um well i'm here because you know um things haven't really gone my way you know things have not been going my way you know uh and i find that but you know i i was I had all these things different things set up and and you know i haven't been lucky you know i've not been lucky with my job with my family with this and with that and then i found myself i was spiraling into you know all kinds of like trouble with you know drugs and pornography and you know and and i i was losing i was basically losing everything so i realized that i had to get my life in order and so that's why i'm here
that's just paraphrasing and I'm not breaking any seal of confession it's just that was basically the thing but the, the key thing for me was the person said to me you know you know things were not going my way things were not going my way mm. which made me question to myself well whose way whose way in, in whose way is my life going you know who is in charge of my life who directs my life you know um, who is in charge of my life you know really uh, and you know my my answer again comes down to well it's Jesus you know Jesus is my life uh, and my life has to go his way um, uh, you know and even if it takes me a while to, to, to get there it has to go his way there's no other way so I just wanted to share with that with you today because <clears throat> These are the kind of things that I pray about, you know, the people I encounter and people say things to me about their life. And I think, oh, wow, that's like, actually, I, I, yeah, I know what you're saying. You know, I know what you're saying. Um, so uh, it resonates with me. And so then I pray about it. And then and now I'm sharing this with you because to see if it resonates with you as well, you know, but but because our life with Jesus is so important and, you know, and we struggle with it. Um, well, actually, I think we probably struggle with ourselves. Um, I think we struggle less with ourselves and just like turn to, to him, you know, just, just, just directed everything to him, then we wouldn't struggle, you know. And I think that's the challenge with prayer is to ask Jesus to be able to help us to not struggle with us, just to like give it all to him, give it all to him. Okay, so... Let's do that. And that, that marvelous quote from Pro Proverbs again, you know, of course, you know, el, el, hombre dispone, el hombre propone, Dios dispone. The preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. May it be so. Anyway, um, I've got two little invitations to you, or three maybe. Um, um, firstly, um, a week today is the 25th of February. And about a year ago, I said, no, about six months ago, I said to you, no, that well, I'm going to sponsor and organize um, an ice cream social in the middle of winter so that we can just brighten up the dark days of winter and just gather and have just a moment of fun. So I'm inviting you to an ice cream social this time next week, uh, well, a week today at 6 p.m. here in the hospitality room. And you're all welcome to come and eat ice cream with me and just share a moment and have a bit of fun because it's winter and everybody needs ice cream, whether it's summer or winter. And so please come if you can at six o'clock. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Just come along and enjoy it. I'm sponsoring it. And the reason why I'm sponsoring it is because uh, this time next week, it'll be my birthday. I'll be 56. And I'd like to share that moment with you. So if you'd like to come and share that moment with me, please do. However, one condition, just your presence with a C, please. No presence with a T, just your presence is enough. I, I just love to see you all here uh, having an ice cream and spending an hour or so. And um, yeah, celebrate winter and my 56 years of life, of which I'm blessed to have two years of them here with you at Church of the Holy Spirit. That's invitation number one. Invitation number two is this Sunday, Bingo Bash. Yes, do you like bingo? I know. <laughs> uh, even if you don't like bingo, you know, I'm not sure if I like bingo, to be honest. I, I always say I'm no good at bingo. When I mean, people sort of say to me, you don't need to be good at bingo, it's just luck. So I'm going to be at Bingo Bash and I hope you'll join me on Sunday afternoon uh, from three till six. Yes, um, it's like a jubilee kind of event, a fun, I'm not sure if it's a fundraiser, it probably is a bit of a fundraiser, but it'll be fun. And there'll be refreshments, including beer on sale, so please come to that. And then finally, on March the 1st, which also happens to be St. David's Day, but it's Mardi Gras as well, uh, we're having a ritual burning of palms. Yes, your palms from last year or years before, you can bring them to the ritual burning of palms and gather with me and the others and we'll have some hot chocolate and some donuts or punchkis and um, we will burn your palms and I'll say a prayer 
and those very palms that we burn, they'll be used to put a cross on your forehead on the following day of Ash Wednesday. Yes, Lent is upon us, and so we're having a ritual burning of palms on March the 5th here in the courtyard at 5 p.m. It won't last long, so don't be late. Anyway, that's enough for today. Um, I've taken enough of your time. Uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, at the weekend, at the celebration of Mass. I'm on the 10 a.m. and the 12 noon Mass. In the meantime, be joyful. Keep the faith. Bye-bye.